Christianity is called the great confession. It started by the way Jesus confessed. Next, he came to us by the way we act on his way. Our confession builds the role, the passage over which faith carries its mighty cargo. In other words, our confession makes way for our faith. By confession, we mean the Christian faith. The Christian faith. I told you that the law of that confession is that I confess I have a thing before I consciously possess it. I confess I have money before I have it. It confesses perfect healing while pain is still in the body. That is the law. Our confession is the thing that challenges the world. It is the thing that causes them to venture in the faith life. Our daily conversation is the great confession. We confess Christ before the world. We confess the fullness of His grace. We confess the integrity of the revelation. When we confess His word, the Bible says He washes over it to make it good. It means when we confess our freedom, that the Son has made us free, God will make that confession a reality. That is it. It is not only our thinking that builds power or witnesses into us, but our words and our conversation also do. That is the state of mind that builds power or weaknesses into us. Our words and our conversation also do. The encounter between David and Goliath is a good example of what we are talking about, the confession. Why David's confession was in harmony with his belief. Goliath's confession was not in with his belief. If David's confession was not in harmony with his belief, Goliath's threats and sighs were enough to scare him into submission. Remember, he did not confess defeat, but he found himself in the realm of defeat. Likewise, many of us are not confessing failure, but we find ourselves in the realm of failure. Any time you are passing through the valley, confess what God says about the situation. David confessed what God said about his situation. When he saw the giants with weapons, with spear, he began to confess what God said. Stop focusing on what is seen. Focus on what God says about your situation. Tell your neighbor, stop focusing on what is seen. Focus on what God says about it. Glory be to God, you have a friend. 
the Holy Spirit who can eliminate all giants ask him to despair every giant in your life ask him to do what? every giant and keep your solid front you have to keep your solid front because you and God are lifting the load together Tell your neighbor, I and God are fighting the battle together. You are not alone. It's the greater part. You and God are fighting the battle. You are cheering with him. You are not alone. Greater is he. You know that? Emmanuel. Indeed, God is with us because this is the arena of liberty, the atmosphere of freedom. And when you come in here, you will never go back home the same. Thank you. Thank you. You may have your seats. Yes, the Lord is in his temple. And the Bible makes us to understand that as followers of Christ Jesus as a follower of the Redeemer as a member of the household of faith as a genuine Christian it is essential to know that your life will always go to the level of your confession. I mean, you cannot rise above your confession. As Christians, when we realize that we cannot rise above our confession, then we are getting to the place where God will really begin to use us as his representatives here on earth. Remember, our confession gives us possession. Our confession solves a problem. Christianity, the Bible says, is the great confession. And the law of confession goes thus. I confess I have a thing before I consciously possess it. This clearly shows that what you speak with your mouth and then believe in your heart becomes a visible reality in this natural world as you constantly hold fast to your confession of faith. With this, you agree with me that as a Christian, you cannot rise above your confession. Tell your neighbor as a Christian, you cannot rise above your confession. Because your confession gives you possession. Your confession solves a problem. This will take us to the brief message titled, You Cannot Rise Above Your Confession. And without much to do, let me quickly take you to the book of Romans.
Romans chapter 10. And when you get home, because of time, you can take your reading from verse 1 to the end. But because of time, I'm going to emphasize on verses 9 to 10. Once again, the proof text for today's message is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 10, from verse 9 to 10. And I read, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And verse 10, For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. That is, with your mouth you confessed and you are saved. What do you understand by this? In that scripture, we are made to understand that Apostle Paul preached the word of faith to the people of Rome. He told them that this word of faith is in two places. In their hearts, they believe. And in their mouth, they confess. This clearly shows that believing is a part of salvation, just as confession is also a part of salvation. Confession is saying what God has said in his word. It is saying the same thing the scriptures have said. It is simply agreeing with God. With the heart, man believes unto salvation. This simply implies that man's heart acts on the word and then drives the lips to confess. By implication, there is power in our mouth. The belief in our heart is released by faith out of our mouth. Therefore, faith, as we all know, faith is of man's heart, of man's spirit, not of man's mind or body. There is no such thing as possession without confession. As a Christian, you are meant to confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart. Because today, many confess to be children of God, men of God, Christians, but they are not such in heart. But if you confess and believe in your heart, you will definitely possess. Indeed, believing is possessing. Because when you believe God's word, you will possess the thing his word has granted. His word says you are blessed. When you believe and confess it, definitely it is yours for the asking. His word says you are delivered. When you believe and confess it, definitely deliverance is yours for the asking.
The Bible says that when you believe and pray, you will know it is His will. When you pray in His name, Jesus Christ comes in and takes over it. Then it is in His care. It is no longer your burden. As long as you do not repudiate it by a wrong confession. You cannot rise above your confession. It is what you confess that you possess. When something is in Jesus' care, it means he is fully in charge of it. Because you leave it all for him. Because you want his will to prevail in that situation. This clearly shows that as a Christian, in whatever situation you find yourself, whether good or bad, leave it for God. He alone can take care of it. He does not need your support to remove that situation. But one thing is certain here. Your word in Jesus' name makes things come into being. I mean come to pass. In other words, your confession in Jesus' name gives you possession. Tell your neighbor, your confession... In Jesus' name gives you possession. Your confession in Jesus' name gives you possession. Now, let me quickly take you to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 11, and let's quickly take verse 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. What a wonderful scripture. This scripture clearly encourages real Christians to say this. No matter the situation at hand, no matter the signs and symptoms I'm experiencing, my heart knows that the case is settled. Tell your neighbor, no matter the situation at hand, no matter the signs and symptoms I'm experiencing now, my heart knows that the case is settled. This is indeed the voice of a believer in Christ Jesus. This is indeed the voice of a possessor of God's blessings, promises by faith. Remember, Jesus Christ is your standby. Your prayer should be followed by an attitude of absolute trust in Christ Jesus, who is your standby, that he is right now working out the answer, slowly but surely. If you confess this and believe it, you receive. For example, You ask for healing. 
And so you get out of the bed and walk. Because healing is yours for the asking. You ask for money. You make provision to pay the bill. Because it is yours for the asking. By faith. You ask for rain. And so you put on your rain coat. Because you're ready when the rain comes. Before your heart can know that the case is settled... It must be rooted and grounded in the word of God. And when your heart is rooted and grounded in the word, then you will know that the case is settled. Do you know that the case is settled? You can only know that the case is settled when your heart is rooted and grounded in the Word. Now let's quickly see the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. Second Corinthians, chapter 5, and verse 21. Are you there? God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. If the scripture says here that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, then you can boldly confess this. I am living in him, I am dwelling in him, and walking in him. In other words, you are what you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. But one thing is certain. Negative confession precedes the possession of wrong things. I mean, negative confession puts failure on the throne for the victim. But positive confession puts success on the throne. For instance, if you confess sickness, sickness takes over your system. If you confess lack of finances, money will stop coming to you. If you confess doubt, wow, doubt becomes, doubt becomes stronger in your heart. Most people do not know this or are ignorant of this because they live in the senses. The Bible says, under sense knowledge, the things of the Spirit are indistinct. I mean, not clear. This is why today, our situation dictates the direction of our prayer. When the goings are good, Jesus is Lord. When there is money in the pocket and salad on the table, wow, Jesus be praised. Every Sunday we attend church, we sit in the front. And when songs are going on, we praise God as if Jesus is just a second away from us. <laughs> but the moment the wind of tough time blows across, we begin to see Jesus Christ in a bad light. Say, hmm. Say, hmm. But permit me to encourage you. As a child of God, as a believer in Christ Jesus, as a member of the household of faith, in your journey in life, 
Each time you encounter trouble, each time you encounter difficulty, each time you encounter crisis that seem to overwhelm you, the Bible says, always remember the most difficult and trying situation God has helped you through in the past. When you remember this, it will impact strength into you to face that situation and come out of it stronger than you went into it. Why would you come out of it stronger than you went into it? Because you are not alone in the battle. You and Jesus Christ are cooperating. I mean, you and him are lifting the load together. You and him are fighting the battle together. Why would you come out victorious when the battle is of the Lord? You are not alone in it. Because he is the greater part of the union. Say hallelujah. Let me quickly take you to the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. Hebrews 13. And verse 5 to 6. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, if you are his own, if you are a member of the household of faith. Verse 6. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Then from this sense, what is confession then? As we said earlier on, confession is saying what God has said in his word. It is saying the same thing the scriptures have said. It is simply agreeing with God. Hebrews 13 verse 5 to 6 says, The Lord will not forsake me, nor abandon me. But if you confess that the Lord will not leave you or abandon you, it means you will possess the very presence of God in every step you take. Therefore, as a Christian, hold fast to your confession of faith. And to hold fast to your confession of faith is to say what God has said over and over until the thing desired in your heart and promised in his word is fully manifested. Tell your neighbor, hold fast to your confession of faith. No matter what comes, no matter what happens. To hold fast to your confession of faith is to say what God has said in his word until the thing desired in your heart and promised in his word is fully manifested with this you agree with me that your life will always go to the level of your confession I mean you cannot rise above your confession but the Lord bless his words If you would like to visit the Synagogue Church of All Nations, 
Log on to our website, www.scoan.org. Go to the Visit Us page. And for those from within Nigeria, you can call the three visit lines that appear on the website. For those from outside Nigeria, there are some frequently asked questions that will assist you in your visit procedure. Remember, it is essential that anyone from outside Nigeria should fill in the questionnaire. Please remember to answer every question that is asked. And after you've filled in the questionnaire, remember to click send. Please note, you must wait to receive an invitation or confirmation of your visit from us before making any traveling arrangements or flight bookings. All communication with the Synagogue Church of All Nations should be through the following email address, info at scoan.org. We look forward to hearing from you. Emmanuel, God with us.